While you're standing, I want to summon your senses and invite your intellect to the book of Exodus. Chapter number 14. And it is there that the Holy Spirit has highlighted for us this context of Scripture. I beseech your prayers tonight. I'm a bit under the weather, so we're going to try to squeeze this little Easter speech out as much as we can. Amen. I would ask also, church, uh, I, want, I want you all to hang around after the benediction is given. I have some specific information I want to share with you. Did y'all catch the state of the church? Did y'all catch that? <clears throat> Amen. So, so hang around for, give me five minutes after the benediction, and we'll let you go. There's some information we want to share with you. Exodus chapter 14. Again with verse number 10. Exodus chapter 14, begin with verse number 10. Your Bible shall read, And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? <clears throat> for it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Do not fear, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Why are you crying unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But you lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the heart of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. I want to snatch our subject out of verse 15 and tag this text, Move Forward. Would you encourage somebody next to you and tell them, neighbor, move forward. They didn't get happy. Look at somebody else and tell them, neighbor, it's time for you to move forward. You may be seated in the Lord's church. Let me give honor and deference to the pastors that are in the house. I see Pastor Naaman Hooker and First Lady Hooker. Bless you. Bless you, First Lady and Pastor Young, Harold Young. God bless you all. Thank you all for being here. Amen. Amen. In the world of DC Comics, the leading, most predominant superhero is Superman. He is recognized as the most powerful superhero of DC Comics. His father sent him to earth to save him from the impending destruction of his home planet, Krypton. And upon him arriving to earth, he actually got more powerful being exposed to the sun from the perspective of earth. 
but his enemies found out something about him that was his only vulnerability. They discover that he loses his powers when he is exposed to kryptonite. Kryptonite, ladies and gentlemen, is a piece of Krypton from his home planet that blew up, made its way to Earth. And his enemies discover that when he is in close proximity with Kryptonite, a piece of his home that blew up, he loses his power and becomes weak as a mere mortal. It's interesting, Brother Weich, that while that is fictional comic book narrative, some things that are fictional have factual meaning. And the fact that you didn't respond to my Superman education says that you you missed what I said. Let me share it again. Superman was sent to earth from his father. And he sent him here to spare him from the destruction of his home planet, Krypton. But the debris of Krypton sent pieces of Krypton into Earth and it became kryptonite and his enemies discovered that when he is exposed to a piece of his past, he loses his power. As long as he stays away from his past, yes, sir. Yes, sir. he can walk in his full power. But his enemies know if he gets him within close proximity to a piece of his past, he loses the power his father intended for him to have. Yes, while that is fictional comic book narrative it holds factual meaning doesn't that sound like Satan Satan knows that as long as he can get you within proximity of your past you start to live beneath the power of what your father intended for you to have that's God's word for somebody in here tonight. The truth of the matter is, you'll be all right as long as you stay away from the pieces of your past. The apostle Paul put it this way to the church at Philippi. He said, brother, and I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do. I'm forgetting those things which are behind and I'm reaching for those things which are before me and I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Might I share with you, ladies and gentlemen, that you and I are on the shores of a new year facing the reality that the end of the year is a conclusion and an introduction. Yes, sir. It's one because there is another. It is a conclusion because it is an introduction that God wants you to move forward and press and put as much distance as you can from the past that is intended by the enemy to weaken you. 
let me let me put this little Easter speech in this one sentence and share with you here's the thesis of this little Easter story this is all it is it's, it's simply this your progress is somewhere measured between moving and removing I'm going to say it again because this side acting funny uh, your progress is somewhere measured between moving and removing translated you ought to be moving but if you're not moving you ought to be removing if you're not moving something ought to be going out of your life or you ought to be moving to where God would have you to be progress is somewhere measured between moving and removing such as the discipline discovered in the discourse of Exodus chapter 41 you, you, here was the directive it's in verse 1 I, I don't have nothing to make up tonight it's in verse 1 God told Moses one thing tell the children of Israel to encamp by the sea between Migdog and the Red Sea it is a geographical cul-de-sac God told them to camp there pitch your tent there stay there that's verse 1 but when we read verse number 10 the text says that the children of Israel got scared because they saw Egypt drawing near do y'all see that in verse number 10 well here's what that means church if they saw Egypt drawing near the first thing that shouts at us is that they had to look behind them maybe fear is birthed in the fact that you're looking in the wrong direction why are you looking at stuff that's already behind you maybe, maybe the first problem is that you are looking in the wrong direction and fear automatically is the outcome of where you're looking Egypt is behind them they saw Egypt drawing near which means they're already looking in the wrong direction but we can't blame them too bad because verse 1 and verse 9 says that God told them to encamp there watch me church it means that they are where God wants them to be and they're still struggling with fear come here because they are naturally afraid and I can't blame them too much they can't help but to be scared y'all because God has them stationary while their opposition is coming to them so naturally I'm going to be fearful if I'm not moving while you got my opposition coming at me I'm not here because I want to be I'm here because this is where you told me to be I thought I had some Bible readers here so I'm at this place because I'm here which means watch me church I am being obedient and I'm still under attack You, 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 you thought obedience was some type of immunization from the attack of the enemy church you can be a tither you can be a church goer you can be faithful to leadership you can participate in ministry and still be under attack the lie they told you is if you do all those things you have some type of exemption or some type of immunity from the attack of the enemy you can be where God wants you to be doing what God wants you to do and still be under attack they're, they're not out of the will of God they're where God wants them to be he said camp there and the enemy is drawing near they're scared 
I wasn't wrestling with their fear, Elder Jefferson. I was wrestling with their information and their verbal response. Listen what they said. They see Egypt coming and they look at their pastor and say, Pastor, you should have left us in Egypt. It would have been better for us to stay there and serve the Egyptians than to come in this wilderness and die. I was all right till I read verse 10 and 11. They didn't just tell their pastor that. They said, didn't we tell you this already? Now I'm struggling with that, Brother Chapman, because nowhere in the first 13 chapters of Exodus do the children of Israel ever tell Moses leave us in Egypt as a matter of fact this information church is inconsistent and inconspicuous it's inconsistent cause in Exodus chapter 2 verses 23 through 25 the reason why God came to get them out of slavery is because the text says they cried unto the Lord and God heard them by reason of their bondage in Exodus chapter 2 you in and want to be out but in Exodus chapter 14 you out and want to be back in Now before y'all act funny, it is inconsistent and inconspicuous because this is new information. But I'm struggling church. How do you want to be out? How are you out and want to be in? At first you was in and wanted to be out. Now you out and want to be in. I was struggling with this because I'm trying to figure out which one of those sentiments is true and which one of them is a lie. I argue, church, that both of them are the truth because these are the symptoms of an oppressed spirit. Oppressed people don't want to be in but dread being out. It is the picture of being in an abusive relationship. Getting out of the relationship, only wanting to go back in the relationship because you want the security at the expense of abuse. Please look this way, don't look around, look this way. Ladies and gentlemen, oppression manifests itself insecurity at the price of abuse I'll stay in this abusive relationship as long as I keep getting paid I'll stay in this abusive relationship as long as he keep paying the bills So you got security, but you ain't safe. That's really what they were saying. We out, but put me back in so we can be back in slavery because we would rather live bound than to die free. That's how some of y'all are. You complain the whole time you in it. And as soon as you get out, you want to go back to what God pulled you out of. What well, can I give you a little FYI? Egypt was chasing Israel because they said in verse 5, why have we let them go from serving us? You missed it, so let me help you. Ladies and gentlemen, your past does not want you. Yeah. 
Your past wants the benefits that come with you. They ain't interested in you. They want what you do for them. Preach Tolan Morgan. They don't care nothing about you. Your past wants the benefits that come with you. So the difference between your past and your future is you making a decision, do you want to be an individual or a commodity? Do you want to be a person or property? Do you want to be an individual or a thing? Where's what you missed? Your past is chasing you because your past know your value and you don't. Your past know your value, but if you want your past, it's because you don't know your value. If you go after your future, it's because you realize I'm more than a thing. I'm more than a commodity. I am a real person with some value and vision on my life. And what's ahead of me is better than what's behind me. Your direction is defined by how you see yourself. If you see yourself as a thing, you're going back to your past. If you see yourself as an individual, you're going into your future. Here we are. Here we are. I brought you out, but you want to be back in. Uh, I ain't preached to y'all in a month so if you in a hurry just go on leave now cause I'm gonna be a minute come here I don't even feel well but I feel like preaching to y'all today come here come here the question becomes why do you want to be back in when I pulled you out, why would you rather serve your past than to walk into your future? So I asked this critical question, coach, was that question circumstantial or was it uh, consequential? Okay, I'm glad you asked. Uh, did they ask that question? Because they've been slaves too long or they haven't been free long enough. See, when you've been a slave for a long time, you're threatened by freedom. Because you can predict slavery, you can't predict freedom. But when you get out, all you know is being in. And when you can't figure out what's ahead of you, you get scared and want to go back to something familiar because you haven't been out long enough. Critical question in here tonight. Are you okay with being out not long enough so that you can experience God? take you into some places you've never been before. I don't know who I'm preaching to. But some of you were not born for the stuff you in. And you letting your crew keep you in a place that God ain't ordained for you to be. Because you see yourself bigger than where you are right now. But all of your girls and your boys are hood rats who are only familiar with being broke, busted, and disgusted and only want to stay down. And the minute you got the nerve to want to go get a better job, you got the nerve to want to live better. And now they're threatened to make you feel scared. The devil is a lie. I guess y'all don't know who y'all talking to, but I'm the head and not the tail. 
I'm above and not beneath. My daddy is rich in houses and land. And how dare he have any broke children? The problem here, have you been in too long or you haven't been out long enough? Okay, uh, Glady and Spies, I got good news. Here come the good news. Because y'all, y'all nerves, y'all, y'all look like you're struggling. Uh, here come the good news. Point number one, fear not. <laughs> I'm about to shout myself. I'm going to tear all this carpet all up again. I promise you. Point number one, fear not. Okay, for all you super spiritual people, Moses wouldn't have had to tell them to fear not had they not had just reason to fear. The Red Sea is in front of them. That's an obstacle. Egypt is coming behind them. That's opposition. They themselves don't have any resources. That's oppression. They got opposition, obstacles, and oppression. They're not moving. The past is catching up to them. You missed all that. They're not moving, and their past is catching up to them. They got reason to be scared. For all of you super deep people, I have no reason to fear. Some of us do have something to fear because when we look around and see our reality, it'll make you scared. But here's the good news. Moses said, don't fear. What was he talking about? Can I tell you what they forgot? While y'all looking at the Red Sea in front of you, Egypt behind you, your own inadequacy in your oppression, you forgot one thing. There's a pillar in front of you. A pillar by day and fire by night. And the reason why you scared is because theologically, y'all, fear is a perceived absence of God. You scared because you took your eyes off of God and start looking at everything around you when God never left you he said I'm going to be a pillar by day and fire by night and if you keep your eyes on me you will not be scared alright y'all forgot when all of your little life stuff happened you forgot the Lord never left you you let life make you think he left you Whenever God is with you, you have no reason to fear. Okay, Moses stood in front of Pharaoh to tell him, let my people go, because the Lord was with him. Joshua was a, a fearless leader and a courageous leader because the Lord told him, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. So Joshua had nothing to fear because the Lord was with him. David stood in front of Goliath when he said, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts because the Lord was with him. Still ain't feeling me. Ladies and gentlemen, the apostles endured persecution because the Lord said, go ye into all the world, preach and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father. And lo, I'll be with you to the end of the world. Mary Magdalene wasn't scared to proclaim the resurrection because Jesus had been with her. Mary, the mother of Jesus, endured scandal because Jesus was in her. He was with her. Ladies and gentlemen, when you think about that God is with you, you make the declaration, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? touch somebody and tell them God is with you so don't let what you see make you blind I'm going to try it again I said don't let what you see make you blind to the presence of God God never left you because somebody who's everywhere at the same time can never go missing. 
Did you hear what I said? I said somebody who's everywhere at the same time can never not be there and can never go miss it. God did not hide himself. You took your eyes off of God. Fear not. Here's, a, here's, a, here's the other good news. Stand still. Okay. Stand still, y'all, is a unique directive to tell scared people. Because <laughs> if they're scared, the one thing they're not going to do is stand still. When you're scared, it's fight or flight. But also, when you're scared, you freeze or fall. Moses said, stand still. This is a directive to stay stationary and don't move. Hold on. You want me to be scared, but you don't want me to move? No, I don't want you to move. I want you to stay where you are because this directive is a directive of self-control. Don't lose yourself just because you're scared. Don't take matters into your own hands just because you scared. Lord, have mercy today. Because if you lose control of yourself, you're going to miss what God's going to do for you. That's God's word for somebody in this season. Gather yourself. Don't fall. And don't take matters into your own hand. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Here was the salvation of the Lord. Y'all ready? The reason why I needed you to stand still is because I need Egypt to get close enough to have a front seat to your miracle. I was using you as bait when they thought you was a trap. The plan was to draw them closer and to use you as bait to make them think they trapped you when actually they were bait for their own demise. So I needed you to stand still to draw them closer because you're not really free until I kill your master. I'm taking out your master this time. I'm not just setting you free, but I'm taking out the thing that had you bound. Let them draw closer. Here's the problem, church. The problem is, Israel never knew God's plan. Only Moses did. Moses looked at the people and said, don't be scared, stand still. Today you'll see the salvation of the Lord and the enemy that you see today, you'll never see him again. Y'all missed it. If you stand still and fear not, I'll make sure that your yesterday don't come into your tomorrow. I'll make sure if you do what I'm telling you to do, this plan is going to work. But you got to do exactly what I'm telling you to do. What's the plan? Hey, Moses, when they get here, see that rod in your hand? I want you to stretch it out over that Red Sea. It's going to split. Y'all going to go across on dry ground. Your past is going to drown. Here's the problem, y'all. Only Moses knew the plan. The people didn't know the plan. You missed it. God was working out a plan for people who didn't trust him. Lord have mercy today. I said God was working out a plan for people who didn't trust him. Ladies and gentlemen, when you don't know the plan, God got a plan. When you don't know how he gonna do it, if you just do exactly what he tells you to do, God always got a plan for his people. And he's got somebody that knows the plan, but you gotta stick to the plan because what he's getting ready to do is a miracle in your today that's only tailored for you. Nobody else saw this splitting of the Red Sea. Nobody else was there to receive this miracle. 
But all you simply need to do is execute the plan and I'm going to work a miracle for you that's tailored for you, which means if you forfeit the plan, you forfeit a miracle that was exclusive for you. I'm going to split this Red Sea, but all I need you to do is stay in place because I'm getting ready to take them out. But you, sir, go over there and uh, stretch that rod over that sea and it's split and I'm going to get glory out of the Egyptians. I'm done, church. I'm done. Here it is. Here it is, y'all. They drowned in that Red Sea. I asked God, hey, God, why would you want to get glory out of them when you were going to kill them anyway? You're going to kill them. Why do you want to get glory out of them? What's your point? If and when they got the revelation that you was the Lord, they wouldn't have been alive to tell it anyway. <laughs> so what's your point? Here's his point, church. I wasn't going to get glory out of their mouths. I was going to get the glory out of their death. Because <laughs> their death meant Israel's salvation. Good night, church. May the Lord God bless you real good. Y'all missed it, so I'll give it to you again. I told you today you will see the salvation of the Lord. And salvation comes because somebody died that somebody else may live. And since you acting brand new, that's what happened in this text. Israel made it over because the death of their past made sure they made it over. That was their salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I are going into 2024 because there are some things that are going to die in 2023 to make sure it don't stop us from where we need to be. Verse 30 says, and the Lord saved Israel that day from the mighty hand of the Egyptians. I'm done, y'all, but you got to help me preach this and just tell somebody you missed the point. So here's the point. Tell them you missed it. Here's the point. Israel wasn't saved just from something. Israel was saved for something. Because the whole picture, y'all, they were on their way to the promised land. And promise got there before they passed did. And I can't let your past interrupt my promise on your life. I didn't just save you from something. I saved you for something. Look at somebody tell them I'm on my way somewhere. No, they didn't get happy. Tell them I'm on my way somewhere. Look back at them and tell them, neighbor, that's the reason why some stuff happened to you this year that was unsuccessful because you're on your way somewhere. And where I'm going has to have the victory over what I've been through. Am I preaching to anybody that knows you on your way somewhere? There's more to life than where you are right now. So you got to give God victory praise for what he didn't let happen. Because where you going got to have the victory over what you are currently going through. Tap somebody and tell them I'm on my way somewhere. So I got to move forward. Y'all gonna help me close this message. Tap somebody and tell them neighbor, move forward, move forward. Your past is not gonna catch up with you because God is saving you for where you going. I thought I had somebody that was on their way somewhere. See, when you know you're on your way somewhere, you shout over the stuff that the devil threw your way, but it did not defeat you because you still alive tell somebody I got promise on my life and I'm still here and because I got promise on my life I've got to give him praise and I got to give him thanks because he's kept me through all 
of my dilemmas. Have I got a witness here? Anybody here tonight? Thank for that God. I'm gonna feel like preaching in a minute. Anybody grateful that God has kept you? Cause you're on your way somewhere. Have I got a witness here? And if you know that you're on your way somewhere, you gotta give him glory because he kept you through every danger seen and unseen can I preach to somebody and I ask you tonight do you got a praise on you that God has kept you cause you're on your way somewhere well tap somebody and tell them neighbor I gotta give him glory because God made sure that I couldn't go back to what he pulled me out of and since I'm out I gotta thank him for doing what only he could do tell somebody that I gotta give him praise because he did it beyond my will he did it beyond my authority he did it beyond my have I got a witness here? Is it anybody glad that that's what we call salvation? The children of Israel should have died, but God, yeah, made sure that they didn't get trapped by their past, but He took their past and drowned it in the Red Sea. He took their past and drowned it. Y'all missed that. It was their baptism. Because when we get baptized, our past goes into the water. And we come up as new creatures in Christ. Do I got anybody here that's thankful tonight? God has buried your past. And now you a new creature in Christ Jesus. Well, then help me preach it to somebody and tell them, neighbor, he that had begun a good work in you. Y'all ain't preaching to nobody here. Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor. Uh uh, you gotta get your preacher voice on. Tell them, neighbor, God will perfect that thing because he that had begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of redemption. And every weapon that was formed against you is not gonna prosper. You will feel pretty good here. You will be able to get to your promise, but you got to stand and having done all the stand, stand, therefore, push your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, stand, when the enemy want to knock you down, stand, when you're ready to give up, stand, if you got depression, stand when you ain't got no money, stand when you're sick in your body, stand. I'm standing tonight because God has been good to me. And if He's been good to you, you ought to give Him glory. You ought to give Him glory. Now let everything that's got breath. Give him glory. I said, give him glory. I said, give him glory. Ain't he all right? Touch somebody and tell him, neighbor, I'm shifting now into my future. I'm pushing myself into my future. And here's why. I should have been dead a 
long time ago but he did to me what he did to Jesus he let me stay down for a few days but I Tell them, neighbor, enlarge my territory. Tell them, neighbor, enlarge my territory. My money, bigger. My name, bigger. My business, bigger. My family, bigger. Yeah. you encourage somebody and tell them neighbor get used to seeing me because I'm going somewhere that not even my enemies can ignore I wasn't just saved from something I was saved for something Now praise him, because God still got you. Tell somebody, God still got you. God still Tell somebody, God still got you. As your pastor, here's what I release in this atmosphere. If you do what God told you to do, I release new business opportunities. Not just so you can be blessed, See, the God I serve isn't a selfish God. Here's what I'm believing, that God will bless you so much that you're not just going to be blessed. 
you're going to be a blessing. I want God to bless you in such a way that you never miss what you give. Here's what I've discovered. People who give never go lacking. I want God to bless you in such a way that you become a blessing. See, see, if I'd have told you I want you to have a new car and all that, you love that, right? No, when you're really blessed, you find a way to give somebody else a car. <laughs> no, when you're really blessed, you find a way to be a blessing. Here's a question. Can God trust you to be blessed? You, got, you want some stuff from God, but God wants some stuff from you. Because I saved you for something. Tony, thank you for sharing your testimony, but you wasn't just saved from something. You saved for something. Some of y'all in here, you've been through some stuff you can't even say. Here's what I want to declare to you. The God I serve has a way of turning silent struggles into loud victories. You may have struggled silently, but you're going to have a loud victory. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? God has never blessed you in a way for you to keep quiet because he can't get no glory out of that you know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, I want God to bless me but I ain't gonna say what he did <clears throat> this my last word hear me hey y'all God was leading them to the Red Sea he opened the Red Sea they walked by it but did y'all notice when they wanted to go back they couldn't Because when they got by the Red Sea, he closed it up. I'm done when I tell y'all this. Hear me. If going back is an option, it was never ordained of God for you to go forward. If you could actually go back, God didn't ordain for you to go forward. But if God ordained for you to go forward, going back is not an option. I don't know who I'm preaching to. God wants what's best for you while you're still chasing the worst. And guess what? Whatever God wants for you, you're going to get it. Somebody give God praise for that. Everyone standing.